Welcome to a segment of the Grind Never Stops podcast. In today's episode, we will discuss what happened last night in Game 7 between the Brooklyn Nets and the Milwaukee Bucks. Hey guys, so welcome to the Grind Never Stops podcast. It's your host, DJ Joe, and as I said in the beginning, we will talk about the Game 7 between the Milwaukee Bucks and the Brooklyn Nets. And this game was close, the closest game as it can get, as it was the NBA's first Game 7 overtime in 15 years. But for the Bucks, they, they didn't have a great start to the game. And they did not have a great end to the fourth quarter. And Brook Lopez is lucky that the Bucks bailed them out in bailed him out in overtime because he didn't look at the shot clock and gave KD a look. But for the Bucks, it was just all about Giannis under the combo, Chris Merut. And Drew Holiday played 48 minutes, but he was great on the defensive end. He was guarding James Harden. But as you guys all know, James Harden choked. And I know I I shouldn't say choke, but in every playoff matchups, even when he was with OKC Rockets and now the Brooklyn Nets, he never shows up in big games. And James Harden is going to recover and he's going to be healthy and we hope that he becomes healthy because the Brooklyn Nets really need him. They need him because you can go in the game 7 and shoot 5 for 17 from the floor and shooting 2 for 12 from downtown. And yes, in 53 minutes, yeah, he still scored 22 points, grabbed 9 rebounds and had 9 assists. But you need more from James Harden because in game he has struggled ever since he returned because in game five he played 45 minutes, had five points, six boards and eight assists. In game six, in 39 minutes in a blowout loss, he had 16 points, five rebounds and seven assists. And in game seven, he only had 22. And yes, he had his nine boards and nine assists. But you gotta get more because Kevin Durant tried the best that he can do with his 48 points, 9 boards, and 6 assists. And Kevin Durant and James Harden literally played every single minute of the game. And they didn't play only 2 minutes of the whole game. Blake Griffin had a great performance as well. In 40 minutes, he had a double-double, 17 points and 11 rebounds on 7 for 12 shooting and shot 50% from downtown. Bruce Brown played 52 minutes. He shot 7 for 9, but he was great defensively. But the one player that was the X Factor before this matchup started is Joe Harris. Joe Harris has a struggled mightily in this series. Game 1, he had 19. Game 2, 13. Game 3, 4, 5, 6, all under 10 points. And in Game 7, he only had 10 points and 9 rebounds on 3 for 10. And from 3 guys, he only made 15 threes out of possible 52 threes. And that cannot happen. And he was the X Factor. Joining Blake Griffin, these players were the keys of this matchup, were the keys of Game 7. And Blake Griffin performed, and yes, he fouled up, but he performed with a double-double, 17 and 11. And maybe some shots at the end of the shot clock, KD pulled up contestant and James Hunt, and Blake Griffin was open in the corner. So, the Brooklyn Nets' decision-making during the whole game was not great and that's why they lost because the Bucks made better decisions and yes Bucks didn't have a great decision when Brook Lopez didn't 
pay attention to the shot clock, which gave KD a great look. But the Bucks made a great decision as Drew Holiday guarded KD in overtime at the last shot, and he made KD shoot a contested air ball three. So the Nets, KD cannot do everything because you know in Game Five he he played every minute, had forty eight, seventeen, and twelve. In Game Six was a blow, but Kevin Durant still put up big numbers. He put thirty two points and eleven rebounds. And in Game Seven, he scored forty eight, nine, and six on seventeen for thirty six. And yes, that's a lot of shots. For the Slim Reaper, but Kevin Durant tried his best to do everything on the floor. Because James Harden, yes, everyone's going to say he played with a great two hamstring, but he struggled mightily. And yes, maybe Harden will get a pass because he was injured and wasn't healthy. But James Harden has never put up big numbers and took his team to the promised land, which is the NBA Finals because he took the Rockets twice to the conference final but he never took them to the finals and losing in the second round is not great because the Nets should have beat this Brooklyn Nets team but again the Nets were unhealthy and we can't the Nets cannot get a pass because they were injured there is at times they did bad decisions like should Kevin Durant took it to the hole should have drove or a floor or a mid-range instead of taking a contested three or he should have looked for James Harden he should have looked for the other guys who was wide open Jeff Green who shot from three in a great percentage in these playoffs and ever since he got injured he's been shooting the three well so these decisions is the reason why the Brooklyn Nets lost Game 7. The Bucks made great decisions down the stretch. They were down early in overtime. They couldn't make a bucket, but they made, a de- they made great defensive stops. That's great defensive decisions. And they great did a big uh, decision on the offensive end. Because Giannis Antetokounmpo did not take the clutch game winner jumper. It was Chris Middleton. And that's why the Nets should have passed it to someone else. Because KD obviously was out of gas. But it's all good, you know. Because the Nets will come back next year. They're going to be a beast of the East. Because they have to make a decision on Spencer Dinwiddie. Who will test free agency. And yes, he's coming off a torn ACL on his right knee. But Spencer Dinwiddie is no joke. Before, when they had Dilo couple last season, uh, two seasons ago, when they didn't have Kyrie, KD, Griffin, all these guys, he was leading the team with D'Angelo Russell. He averaged 19 points, 5 rebounds, and 7 assists as a starting shooting guard for the Brooklyn Nets. So Spencer Dinwiddie is a key piece for the Brooklyn Nets. But I wish they should have used DeAndre Jordan because they got DeAndre Jordan for a reason and KD accepted that move. So there's going to be a lot of decision regarding Spencer Dinwiddie. But for the Bucks, you just got to congratulate the Milwaukee Bucks because finally they got over the hump. But they still got one more round to go to reach the finals. Because, you know, in the Eastern Conference Finals, in 2019, they lost to the Raptors after being up by 2 nothing, blowing out both games by 16 points. And then they went to Toronto, and the Raptors solved, not only the Milwaukee Bucks, they solved Giannis Antetokounmpo. So the Bucks, yes, they can celebrate, they beat one of the best powerhouse team in the, in the NBA, but you still got more one more round to go. And I know everyone will say, ah, oh, it's this, it's the, oh, it's, it's the Sixers, they're trash. They barely beat Atlanta. And then you got Atlanta, who, who is a trash. No, 
These both teams that they're waiting on, they're not garbage. Atlanta Hawks are for real. Trey Young is he's developing faster than a Ferrari. And for the Sixers, they still they still have the best big men in the NBA. They still have a great shooter in Seth Curry. And Ben Simmons is one of the best defensive players in the conference. I don't want to put him in the league, but in the conference, he's still one of the best defenders. And it's not going to be easy. You might think it will be easy, but for the Bucks, the competition does not stop. Because not only that, in the end, if the Bucks reach the NBA Finals and they beat whoever they play in the Eastern Conference Finals, they will play either the Phoenix Suns or the Clippers. And as you know, the Phoenix have a great team in Jay Crowder, Devin Booker and CP3, and DeAndre Ian. And the other team is, you know who it is, is the Los Angeles Clippers. So that won't be easy with Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. So the competition the competition doesn't stop for the Bucks. They just have to keep on working. But I, I feel that Giannis should not fall in love with the three. Because I'm looking here and he shot two for six. And at times he shot that three and was gone. And he needs to shoot better from the free throw and not take 10 hours to shoot a free throw. And Chris Middleton shot 9 for 26, and he was lucky there that he made that jump shot because he wasn't con consistent with that jumper all game long. But this, I'm, I'm not saying Middleton is garbage, but the Brooklyn Nets play great defense on Middleton. And Middleton always has a history of struggling in big games like James Harden. But at least he got you your 10 rebounds and he made that game winning jumper. Also, Brook Lopez had a great game, 19 points and 8 rebounds. PJ Tucker, who's been on Kevin Durant all series long, and he, KD, even all that he, KD averaged 37 points for the series. And PJ Tucker played hard nosed defense, he was all over him. But KD is a natural born scorer and PJ Tucker will have to guard the big guys for either the Atlanta Hawks or the Philadelphia 76ers. Connaughton made some big shots. He had three threes and that all of his threes stopped big runs for the Nets. But uh, that was that's it. So the Bucks beat the Brooklyn Nets 115-111. And I really wanted Kyrie Irving to play as well, but he was injured. James Harden was injured too as he played with the green two hamstring that he wasn't even healthy. He was still injured all this time. But the Harden needed to be on the floor for game five. Because maybe they would have lost game five. But uh, guys, thanks for tuning in for this short segment. Make sure to tune in to our next segment as we will, uh, once the game seven ends for the Hawks and Sixers, we will do a, a conference final preview show and make sure to tune into that. And don't forget to keep subscribing on our YouTube channel. We have 62 subscribers as at this moment. Our road to 1K has started, so make sure to tell all your friends and family and boys and girls to sub to my channel. It's the Grind Never Stops podcast. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and like our Facebook page, and all. And you can also send your donation to our GoFundMe page, and all that will be in the description. So thanks for tuning in, guys, and happy Father's Day to all.